It's the, uh, the capsule hotel of houses. Hello world. I've noticed that there's this trend of showcasing tiny Japanese apartments. They're crazy, they're weird, they're cheap. Today, I want to show you a few, but I also want to explain how and why these small and narrow buildings exist in the first place. And the first place we'll visit is an old kisaten, aka an old school Japanese cafe. So you'll get stuff like katsukare, katsudon, spaghetti, and coffee. And by the way, we forgot to bring a tape measure, so we used our bodies instead. I never knew this before, but your arm span is basically the same as your height. Try it out yourself. Okay, let's measure how long you are. 160 centimeters. 164. That's about a 100, so 100 centimeters. And then it's like 60 for just an arm. It's like 40 for the body. It's so like 60, 40, 60 kind of centimeters. We'll translate that into inches. Okay. So the cafe was about 100 centimeters at one end. With the green vines enveloping the building, it's got a very unique vibe. I just love the different perspectives I was able to get of the building thanks to the nearby pedestrian bridge. It looks absolutely thin from some angles, but from others, it's harder to tell. And not only is the building thin, it's also dwarfed by its neighbors. Inside, I was expecting it to feel a lot more cramped, but to me, it didn't feel that different from any other restaurant. With an update in decor, I could imagine this being a hip little space. Behind my sister-in-law, Akko, is the toilet. As you'll see, putting the toilet in the narrowest part of the building is a common design feature among triangle-shaped buildings. In case you're wondering, this cafe is a 10-seater, with the kitchen located at the widest part of the building. If you walk around the neighborhood, Taitoku, you'll come across many other narrow buildings. They're thin at the front and wide at the back. Because the streets aren't in perfect squares, you'll get these odd-shaped buildings to match the odd-shaped pieces of land. And this is where using your body to measure isn't the best tool. Even when the land is in a little sliver in the middle of an intersection, it can still be used. Am I measuring a building? Am I recreating Titanic? Who knows? But upon closer inspection, this building has to be about 100 centimeters at the narrow end. In case you're trying to find these places, this building is located in Edogawa-ku, but I'll leave the locations in the description. Over in Yanaka Ginza, we discovered this burger shop. ハンドチョップして、ハンバーガーに加えてきます。上で食べてもはい。えっと、ステップインチーズとステップインチーズ。はい、あと<笑> I'd say it's closer to 80 centimeters, but whatever. And looking at Akko's arm length, I'd say the stairs to the dining area are about 60 centimeters. The kitchen reminds me of the kind of space you'd find in a food truck, which, thinking about it, is probably not very different space-wise from some noodle shops I've been to. To tell the truth, having run a kitchen before in Vancouver, I can appreciate how being able to find small spaces to run a food business out of is so much more financially viable. Once we climbed up to the second floor, we found out that like the cafe, there was enough seating for 10 customers. I thought the second floor eating area worked out really well, even though you could touch both walls if you stretched your hands out. <laughs> Personally, because of the way it was set up, it felt cozy versus clustered. The windows kept it nice and bright, and there were good space optimization features, like the counter-style seating and how everything you'd normally place on the table was instead placed on the wall. Behind the curtains is some pantry space for the restaurant, and down below is where we find the toilet. And I think the camera did a good job of capturing how steep and narrow the stairs are. If you're taller than Akko and I, which is not hard to do, you better watch your head. So now it's time for the great toilet reveal. It was narrow, for sure, but looking at it, it made me think it's likely not that different than my toilet at home. 
And now seeing the footage, I'd have to say the sizing of both are fairly similar. Around the neighborhood, there were many buildings that were fairly narrow, like the interior of this street shop, which is roughly 160 centimeters wide. With Akko's omiyake purchased, we continued our search for more tiny buildings in the neighborhood. Quick, can you guess how wide this building is going to be? I'm going to have to say that it's almost a perfect 160 centimeters. They really squeezed this one in there. We came across a new building being built, and of course, we had to measure it. According to Akko's incredible measuring performance, I'd say this lot is roughly 350 centimeters wide. Now we're moving on to a residential apartment building, and real estate agent Alex has the keys to let us in. So this is probably the smallest residential building, at least for apartment buildings that I've ever seen, and here it is. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty extreme. Yeah, and I see up there it says the triangle building. Yep. And if you follow the line all the way over here, it really is a sharp triangle here. It's a very sharp triangle, and uh, yeah, they're able to build right up to the line. You can see the entire way down. Okay, yeah, the property line. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, but they had to leave this little triangle right over here. Okay, so this portion. Yeah, uh, reason being is that in Japan, uh, zoning says that you have to have, if you have a corner lot, you have to have that one corner uh, bare. You can't build on it because otherwise cars wouldn't be able to turn on it. Uh, usually it's just like a little kind of, yeah, you can see like there's another oh, okay. one there. Like, if we go like over a little here. sliver like this where it's, you know, you can't really notice it that much, but over here it's pretty noticeable. That's, um, I think that's less than 40 centimeters, maybe 35 or something. Obviously, if any of you were paying attention to my body measuring at the start of the video, you'd know that the full length of my arm is about 60 centimeters. So this building would be more like 50 centimeters. I deeply apologize for this mistake, and I understand if you decide to swipe left right now. Yeah, usually I have to go like this to cover a whole building at least, you know, but, you know, it's pretty tiny. The other side, though, is a bit larger. I got 160 over here. That's maybe 300, 310 okay. centimeters we got. There we go. So in the comments, you guys figure out the exact area of the, uh, they need one more line, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you can yeah. do some geometry, <laughs> you know. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that h squared plus 5 squared is equal to 13 squared. Luckily, I didn't need to learn from Khan, since the units are listed as 11 and 14 square meters, which looking at the layouts doesn't seem quite right, as the only difference is one is rotated 90 degrees. So on a previous video about housing that I did, I learned that you need to have at least two meters of street frontage in yes. order to build a building. That's correct, yes. So even though like, you know, this is only maybe 35 centimeters, but because this is two meters, this is okay? Oh, this is, yeah, this is way more than two meters. I mean, two meters would just go out to about here and you have the rest of the building over here to cover for that. So yeah, you, uh, you really don't have any restrictions to build on this so much as, uh, well, you do have that corner, as yeah. I was talking about before. And then of course you have the maximum that you're allowed to build on it. But there's really no minimum, at least not in this area, as to how small the place can be. But this must pretty much be 100% lot coverage. Well, no, it's or actually maybe... probably about maybe 80 or 90. Looking at the zoning for this area, you're allowed to have 80% lot coverage. So buildings can only occupy 80% of the total land. Okay, and so like, if I wanted to cut this building like over here, would that still be a legit building? Oh, if you want to make it small? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. That's not a problem. You can make it as small as you want, really, around here at least. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Are we able to go up and see? <laughs> if you'd like. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is intense. All right, so this is the entrance, and you can see right here you have the mailboxes, too. Oh, they're very cute. Yes, and uh, they could fit all of maybe two letters. <laughs> maybe three, if you're lucky. Okay. This is like amusement, kind of like when I was a kid, climbing up the little tunnels and playgrounds. Yeah, and then having yeah. all of these mirrors everywhere, too. This is the entrance. Oh, we got the game comp over here. Yeah, here's where my shoes are. And okay, I can fit my shoes, I think, too, as well. Okay. Uh, and, well, do you want to see what's behind yeah. door number one? <laughs> or door number only? And... Ooh, try to fit in here? <sighs> I mean, it could work. I think you'd be able to fit all of, like, two gallons of water in here. I, I want to I go in there. Okay. 
Oh, this looks like a lot of room. I don't know what you're complaining about. Look at this. Oh, yeah, okay. It's designed for people my size, which is 163 centimeters, by the way. Okay. okay. Which I learned, if you go from arm to arm and extend it, mm -hmm. it's like the same size as your height, that's pretty right. much. Yeah, that's right. That's yep. right. But can you get up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Oh, All this room here. There you go. Oh, yeah. Hand that over. Okay, so uh, right over here we have our sink. Uh, which does have water running, that's very nice. And also your kitchen over here. And yeah, this is the entirety of your kitchen. And uh, well, this is what they call a 1R, which stands for a one room, i.e. it is a studio. It's 11 square meters, and that includes the bath, the kitchen, this area, and the toilet. The, wait, where is the toilet? It's a good question. It is not here. No, it's not here. This is just your closet. Okay. They've taken the whole bath and toilet separate thing to a new extreme. Come on over here. Okay. So, yes, we do actually have to leave the apartment one time in order to get to your toilet. Okay, okay, let me here. just... Wow, and I didn't even notice this. If you look really closely, they actually mounted the toilet sideways. This is the, the edge of the building. Yeah, you can totally tell the... <laughs> yep, so if I wanted to use this, it would be over here. Actually, <laughs> this would work. It'll work. Yeah, I mean, here, let's close you in. I don't even know how you lay this out. Usually I get into a place I can tell right away, okay, put the bed there, put the dining table. No, the bed's over here, clearly. I guess the bed's Put the bed here. under here. Uh, and it does have AC and heat. Oh, nice. That's nice. Uh, and what I really like about this is that you can have fiber optic internet in there too. Oh, okay, this is how you do your laundry though, it looks like. That is where you hang your laundry. Hey, this balcony is spacious. Yeah. I can put many plants on here. This is, yeah, one hand, so it's about one and a half Alex hands. I mean, you could have your, your kitchen table right here with a nice window view. Um, or you could flip it around and let's go this side. Over here, you could also have your little like work table, kitchen table, desk here. I mean, I don't see any problems with it. That's 163, let's say. And then from here, okay, so that's, oh, 240 centimeters over here. So I don't really wanna do this because the floor seems a bit sticky, but you know, let's see if, uh, oh, I mean, there's a lot of room to sleep over here. Look at this. You have lots of room. Look at all that headroom you have there. That's not bad. How many stories is this building? It's five. Five? Yeah. And so how many units are in here? Five. Oh, no, I take it back, six. So six units. There oh. is actually a basement floor as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and they're all exactly the same size. And are they occupied at the moment? This is the only one that's available. So yeah, everything else is occupied. All right, so yeah. hurry up. In fact, it looks like they've done some renovations and the layout doesn't seem horrible. More so, since they did renovations, as of right now, March 1st, 2024, they have a few units available for rent. If you look at the size listed, 5.5 Joe, that's five and a half tatami mats for the room, not counting the toilet. I have bedrooms in my house that are both bigger and smaller, so you really are renting a single bedroom, just one that has a little stove, sink, fridge, and, well, a shower stall. Or think of it as a hotel room. There are capsule hotels that have much, much less space, but business hotels basically have this amount of space. For example, this one's 12 square meters or 130 square feet. Yeah, come on guys. Yeah, uh, and by the way, this is 42,000 yen a month. And that number has changed to be 38,000 yen a month. No key or deposit money needed. With today's exchange rate, that's 250 US dollars. Yeah, no, it, I, you know what? It grows on you, it does. Yeah? It does. I think this is what I expected though. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could live here for sure. Real talk. I felt that all the buildings were just fine for space. They weren't really any different than what I was used to in other areas of Japan. The thing that really stands out to me is that because of how the zoning laws work, you can slice and dice the land into little pieces and make use of almost any space, no matter the shape or size. With land costs being so expensive, this can bring a lot of value to people and businesses that can't afford to pay for some massive minimum lot sizes that are quote unquote, preserving the character of a neighborhood. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. What are the tiny buildings like where you're from?